Adam Savage here in my cave answering questions about Mythbusters from tested patrons. And, oh. Gary Chang, sorry, I ended up reading another question, but Gary Chang asked the question that I'm gonna answer in this video. And his question is, what is your favorite <clears throat> life experience on Mythbusters that you don't think you would have done otherwise? Some things that come to mind, including flying to the edge of space, flying in an F-16, swimming with sharks. Yeah, every one of those was astounding. <clears throat> flying to the edge of space in the Dragon Lady, uh, 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 in a U-2 spy plane, we left from Beale Air Force Base up here near Sacramento, and the crew, uh, the crew at Beale Air Force Base could not have been more amazing to work with. And that plane was incredible. I got to be in a plane and look down at California from such a height. By the way, my, my highest altitude I've been to is a classified number. I am not allowed to tell you what that number is. I can tell you that I went above 70,000 feet and that is the exact phrase I'm allowed to say. I went above 70,000 feet. For reference, when you look up and you see a plane going across the sky, at its full height, which is usually 30 to 40,000 feet, that's how far below us that plane was when we were in the U-2 spy plane. It was amazing. It's also a fairly quiet and slow plane, all things considered. Uh, it can fly faster because the air is way thinner up there, but it's not like a kind of crazy noise environment. It's almost meditative. Really, it was an unparalleled experience. And the F-18 F Hornet flying with the Blue Angels, <laughs> so insane. I broke the speed of sound seven times. I pulled seven and a half Gs three times and I only passed out twice. <laughs> I stayed conscious in a full seven and a half G roll. Conscious is about all you could really hope for. I mean, unless you're one of those, one of those Blue Angels. If you're an F-18 pilot, man, Every one of them is a physical specimen of unparalleled <laughs> uh, 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 health and uh, rigor. What else did you include here? Swimming with sharks. Yeah, swimming with sharks. That's definitely something I n had no desire to do. Never even occurred to me to think about wanting to do it. When we first went down to the, the Bahamas to shoot for Shark Week, I didn't want to go swimming with sharks. Then we were out with Doc and his crew at the Bimini Biological Field Station and they took us out to this spot where we're all in snorkels and like holding arms in this big circle and we're looking down and I, I can see about, I can see all the way to the bottom perfectly clearly. It's only 40 feet deep and there's a sandy white sand bottom. And this is often what's really important for going shark diving is you need something to be able to see them against because they're very well camouflaged. And I'm looking down at this sandy bottom and I see the shadow of a hammerhead shark. And I don't know what to tell you, except that to see a hammerhead in the world was one of the most, it is an alien. And to see it so close to me, I still remember, like I had the snorkel in and it sounded, my, to my head it sounded like this. Just like I'm holding on to the two people on either side of me and just like looking at this. Later on, I would be jumping into literal piles of sharks eating live chum. I was so calm and relaxed about it. But at that moment, it was the scariest thing I had ever done. I have since found diving with sharks to be some of the most beautiful experience I've ever had in nature. Sharks are unbelievably beautiful and spending lots of time underwater, getting paid to spend lots of time underwater, it's not much better than that. Um, my favorite Shark Week shoot was the, the final one we did where we I wore a suit of armor underwater. We did a whole bunch of tests. We actually sailed to a place about 60 miles south of Nassau uh, to a place called Tiger Beach. And I got to see real tiger sharks on the prowl. Um, I got hustled into a shark cave by safety divers because a big tiger came through. I've seen some stuff, but my favorite life experience that never occurred to me that I would get to do or even wanted to do, it's hand feeding an octopus. We were, uh, we were 
I think it was the very first season of Mythbusters or even the pilots. I think it's the first season we did octopus pregnancy. Supposedly, uh, Scuba Diver had swallowed some octopus eggs while scuba diving and they grew in the scuba diver's stomach. So to test this, we had several things. We made like stomach acid equivalent and tried to grow things in it. But we also had to go meet an octopus. So we called up the Monterey Aquarium and they let me come on down and go behind the scenes and be part of the feeding of one of their giant Pacific octopuses, which is, which are, these are big animals. Uh, and they're first, I mean, I've always, I've always loved octopuses. I've always been riveted by them as creatures, as incredibly weird question loci about sentience and what it means to be conscious, what it means to be a thinking animal. Um, yeah, they're, they're amazing. And I was definitely cognizant how amazing octopuses were. Um, but again, like I never imagined I'd get to be near one. I thought I would just be watching someone deal with the octopus. But then I get there and I'm standing over the tank. And by the way, every octopus tank is lined in something like 18 inches of astroturf because it is this one thing that octopuses cannot grab. It is like their kryptonite is astroturf. I think is really, really funny. Um, and one of the things aquariums do with octopuses is they attempt to socialize them because octopuses aren't naturally social. They're, they're lone hunters. And if you put them in an aquarium tank, they tend to want to hide until they can't see anybody. So you do a lot of socializing with them behind the scenes so that they're willing to kind of move around and they get comfortable moving around while people are there. So I was part of this, right? They brought me back and they, it's time to feed the octopus and they let him know I can't remember if it was him or her. They let the octopus know that they were there by agitating the water and the octopus came over and you could see the octopus sort of eyeing you from under the water. And then the, the, the handler handed me a shrimp and said, give this to him. And I held it out above the water and this little tendril comes out and touches it. And then I watch as it passes the shrimp, sucker to sucker, like every sucker has muscles, every sucker has taste buds and it passes that shrimp all the way down to the beak in the middle of its mantle. I think those are the correct terms. Um, and then the octopus comes back and touches my hand and starts to like touch my hand more. And the handler tells me he likes the taste of your skin. Like it is, it, we, they can tell. <clears throat> I ended up spending 45 minutes there with the octopus wrapped around my whole arm. They made sure that I didn't get my hand close to its beak where it could bite me or harm me. Uh, I had hickeys all the way up to my shoulder. My wife, I was like showing my wife when I got home all these brown hickeys. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, the octopus got really playful. It squirted water. I mean, there was, there was, when you stare into the eyes of another creature like that, it feels a little less lonely. I mean, I really think that's why, I really think that's why our relationship with dogs and cats and our pets are, are, and our horses and whatever other pets you have. But when you have a pet and you have a shared life with that pet, um, you end up being able to really communicate in some important ways with these animals that don't speak our language, but we actually do, can, we can get to some level of communication. And I think there's something really emotionally uh, uplifting about communicating across the chasm of species. And there is this way in which an octopus, when it's like looking at you with one of its eyes and you could just like, it's just impossible not to be sure that that eye is thinking some thoughts about you. <laughs> it's amazing. I have since met two other octopuses and they all had the same reaction to me, which was that they like, they love the taste of my skin and we spent lots of time together. <laughs> um, the most recent one was under the aegis of Rich Ross at the uh, Academy of Sciences Steinhardt Aquarium. And my wife came along for that. Mrs. Don't Try This came with me. And I, she had long known this story about the taste of my skin and octopuses and she loves octopuses. So she was secretly hoping that she'd have the same kind of like natural octopus whisperer skin that they would really like. And so she put her hand out and the octopus was like wrapping around my hand and then it reached out a tentacle to her and it touched her hand and then went back to my hand. 
I don't, I don't mean to revel in her disappointment, but like, I totally understand it. Uh, it did end up spraying us both with water. And I remember this great moment of seeing my wife like drenched, but with just pure joy, pure joy on her face. Um, yeah, hand feeding octopuses, man. There are a few things weirder and more wonderful and that feel like I'm somehow, like I said, bridging a important chasm of consciousness. Yeah. I don't think I have anything more to add to that. I think that's a pretty good, uh, 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 pretty, it's a pretty good answer. Uh, Gary Chang, thank you so much for such a terrific question. I love talking about the octopuses. It's not octopi. Remember that. It's never octopi. It's oct octipodes or octopuses. Octipodes. Um, thank you, Tested Patrons, for your excellent questions. Uh, I will keep submitting them and I will continue to keep answering them in this format. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.